I kind of look at being an entrepreneur as a lot like climbing Mount Everest, right? And it's, it's, there's, a, there's unknown territory, especially if this is your first time doing this. Um, and there's peaks and there's valleys, right? And the truth is you don't really want to do it alone. And so you, the way I think about this program in this class is that we are your guide. We are your Sherpa, right? You wouldn't climb Mount Everest alone. So don't start this journey alone. Let our team of mentors help guide you through this um, because it's just going to be easier. You'll have a sounding board. You'll have people to bounce ideas off of. And, and if we do this right, at the end of this class, you'll want to stay together at, on this journey beyond just the 12 weeks to, to share your ideas and your progress to date. Because um, we're, we're talking just about the beginning, right? So this is the process um, kind of, I look at as launching a tech company tech focused or tech enabled business, right? And this is something that I came up with over 10 years ago and that we used both at my nonprofit startup chicks back in the day and then at ATDC, the, the incubator for the state of Georgia. And I will say the only class that we didn't teach at the incubator is this class, the start with the why. Um, and I added that later because it's really important for you to understand why you're on this journey, uh, who you wish to serve and why you're on this journey. But basically we're gonna go through the first five sections over the next really 12 weeks. We're gonna talk about tonight's start with the why and I want you to think about what your why is and we're gonna walk you through an exercise to help you really uncover your why. And the next four weeks are customer discovery. Um, we're gonna talk about the business model canvas which is gonna be our key tool for uh, uh, outlining our business versus a business plan. Um, we're going to talk about how to interview customers. You're going to interview 40 to 50 customers over the next four week, five weeks. Um, we're gonna talk about customer archetypes and personas. Murum is gonna teach that class. And we're gonna talk about the customer journey. And I sometimes refer to that as the follow the money map, like how there's different ways to get paid. So sometimes you're giving your content away to your customer for free, but you're making money somewhere else. And so we wanna map that out and have a document that describes how we're gonna make money and, and what our customer journey looks like. Then we're gonna go into financial literacy and financial literacy, we're gonna actually uh, come out of that. So out of part one, you're gonna have a complete business model canvas out of the customer discovery component. Then we're gonna talk financial literacy. We have a mentor from SCORE um, Ned Duffy, who's going to help myself and Rad teach this. And at the back end of that, you're going to have a five-year financial model. So you're going to have an Excel spreadsheet with all your assumptions that are related to your business financially documented, the type of financial model that an investor wants to look at should you seek investment funds. And, and that will take a week or two. And then we're going to um, bring in some outside help from some attorneys and accountants. So I call that making it real. We're gonna talk about corporate structure. We're gonna talk about intellectual property. We're gonna talk about accounting best practices such that you uh, don't break the law the first year of your business uh, related to uh, accounting and things like that. And, and that's gonna be outside help that comes in and meets with, with us as a group and also one-on-one -on -one to make that happen. And then the last component is telling your story. And that's really um, pitching. And we're, we're going to cover it in a couple different ways, depending on your scenario. Some of you may choose to raise money and we're going to have you create an investor pitch deck that you could get on stage in any city in this, any city in the country and pitch in front of angel or venture capitalists and, and know your stuff, because that's what I've done before, right? For those of you that aren't looking to raise money, we're gonna have you do a pitch deck for customers such that you have a leave behind that you could take to a customer or that you could give to a customer as an overview of your business and try and sell your business. The other people you have to pitch sometimes are potential employees. So um, we could also focus a pitch deck specifically towards trying to get people to join your team. And so those are the components of this, this class, right? Um, all the while, 
you know, for some of you, software development might be going on. For some of you, uh, fundraising might be going on. And for some of you, you might start some marketing campaigns, even while we're in those conversations, to get access to more customers for more interviews. Um, but so that's kind of the next phase, development, marketing, launch, uh, funding, launch, listen, customer opposite acquisition, and then scaling your business, scaling sales. But we're going to focus on those first five blocks over the next 12 weeks. Um, there's going to be homework. There's going to be um, class every week. There's going to be probably 10 to 15 hours of homework every week. And there's going to be additional mentoring cap uh, options during the week. So if you get stuck during the week, we want to hear from you. Um, we're probably going to set up a Slack channel so you can just Slack us if you get stuck as well so that you can get help right away. Um, and that's kind of the overall of the process. Um, I think I go into this later. The process is built on kind of a, a movement that has started uh, across the startup world. And it really started probably in um, 2008, 2009. And it started really with um, th these two different individuals looking at it from two different ways. Um, Eric Ries is probably the more famous of the two with the idea of the lean startup, right? And how do you use this idea of continuous innovation, continual improvement to change your business and just kind of start with a nugget and grow from there. And, and he takes a very product centered uh, development process. Um, the other book is the Startup Owner's Manual, which was actually Four Steps to Epiphany was the uh, Steve Blank's first book. Um, and, and Steve Blank, uh, and both Eric Reese and Steve Blank are successful Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. Um, Eric did some gaming companies, uh, some virtual reality, uh, some virtual worlds, I believe, was one of his first things. Uh, Steve Blank was the founder of Epiphany, which is a SaaS software company. And after he had a huge exit and built this, bought this huge um, ranch outside Silicon Valley, he decided he was going to go back and get his master's and his PhD and he studied entrepreneurship. And what he really studied was why do so many startups fail? Uh, you know, 97% of all startups fail in the first five years of business, right? And less than 1% of all companies that launch in this country ever break a million dollars a year in revenue, right? So why is that? And so he came up with this, this model and it's documented in this book, the Startup Owner's Manual, about the customer discovery process. And that's what this, this first four weeks are based on. Um, next, next slide, Jim. So again, why, why this process? 50% of all businesses fail in the first five years. Um, this uh, other quote is a great quote that I just love, right? So we're hoping to succeed, we're okay, we're failure. We just don't wanna land in between. So I worked with this one company uh, back at Startup Chicks, really cool founder, founding team, really cool IP, um, had built this physical product, had, had some voice technology that was patented, built, built this physical product and, and really ran hard at it for probably five years and, and really um, never had real success. You know, one week I'd talk to her and they'd be on Good Morning America, right? And, and she'd be freaking out because, you know, the website was going to crash and they weren't going to be able to sell, you know, you know, just all the issues that come with the idea of getting this last minute spike and not knowing how to plan for it, right? And then two months later, she'd be ready to shut down the business because they just couldn't afford to keep going, right? And that's like the worst place. I'd rather like, you know, Either no, right? Succeed or failure it really doesn't matter. If I fail, I can pick up and take another idea and run with it. You know, I'd like to succeed, but this, the worst place to be is right in the middle where you have a little bit of success, but not enough to pay yourself or not enough to really scale the business the way that you hope to scale the business. So um, that's why this process exists. Um, that's why, you know, a professor at Stan, he's now a professor at Stanford, Steve Blank, and he teaches this class. And I was lucky enough to actually get trained in the methodology from him himself. Uh, you know, 
talk about success, what people think's like, you know, the overnight success story in technology startups is 10 years, right? Um, I mentioned earlier that I work with, uh, in Atlanta, three companies that most recently in the last six months all got named uh, as unicorns, billion dollar companies. It's Calendly, Salesloft, and Greenlight, right? Um, and, and somebody at the Metro Chamber said, we have six unicorns in, or three unicorns in the last six months. And I'm like, no, we have 10 years of hard work that ended up in a, those three companies all started 10 years ago and now are this overnight success unicorn, right? So it's messy and lots of uh, challenges on the way, right? Um, so, you know, a tech startup is a five to 10 year journey. Most startups are a five to 10 year journey. And so uh, building a strong support system around yourself and really understanding uh, your why, which is today's topic, is really important. Um, you know, entrepreneurship, it's not easy. It's not for everybody. Um, it's been glamorized by television and movies and books and, and what, and, and you know, uh, you know, Steve Jobs and Michael Dell and um, Bill Gates and Elon Musk now, right? Um, they are not the norm, they are the anomaly, right? So um, this, for most people, this is a five to 10 year journey and it's not really about freedom or not having a boss. Like if, if you're here, cause you think you're gonna be free, like I've never worked so hard in my entire life as when I've been working on a startup, right? And you always have a boss. You might call him a customer, but you have a boss. You have somebody that you need to satisfy uh, in order for you to be successful in your business. And you might have more freedom with your time, but um, if, a, you know, if a customer or an investor needs you to do something, you're gonna drop everything and do it, right? So I think you know, this is about your why, and your why has to be bigger than freedom or not having a boss. Your why has to be something that you, that's about a problem or a group of people that you are passionate about serving and solving a problem or really helping them. Um, and I believe it kind of starts with the who, not necessarily the why. Um, so uh, if you have a notebook, take it out because I'm going to walk you. The rest of this, I'm going to, I'm going to basically put up a slide with a question on it and talk through it. And I'm gonna give you some time to jot some notes down about what your why is. You can answer the question. Um, at the end, I'm gonna give you a couple of books and a, a quick link to, uh, I think there's a PDF version of one of the books. It's called Vivid Vision. It's one of my favorite books for creating a vision for your company, your startup. Um, and so what we really wanna do this, this week is try and document some things, walk through a process such that you can create a vivid vision for your business so that when we come into next week and start the customer discovery, you know your why. Any questions before I start? Awesome. All right, one of my favorite books, if you haven't read it, check it out, is Start With The Why by Simon Sinek, right? And he did a TED talk. So if you don't really want to read the book, um, you can go watch an 18 minute talk on why you should start with the why. Um, and, you know, it's, it's figure out your why, right? Then figure out how you're gonna do something to act on that why, and then figure out what. So um, it's, you know, um, so I think this is a great book. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it, right? Or, or they buy um, the, the underneath reason. So um, I believe that all great startups start with a strong vision and their why. And I highly recommend this book. You um, got it all right? Oh, good. I am gonna send out um, these slides or we will send out these slides or give you access to these slides in case you want them. So, all right. 
Um, you know, Steve Jobs, Apple has such a strong why, right? Um, their why was to create a, a great experience with technology, right? It was beyond Microsoft's view of just getting a computer to everybody, but it was the user experience, right? They wanted everybody to be a designer. They wanted everybody to, to feel that passion around the product that they used and, you know, pretty much have succeeded, right? Um, Sarah Blakely, right? Female startup chick, total rock star entrepreneur, right? Um, her why, she didn't want anybody to see her panty lines in her white pants and figured other women had the same issue. Right, and it's really about empowering other women. Right, so that's like her, like her mission has grown from Spanx to Spanx pants, to Spanx tops, to Spanx shoes, to Spanx purses, to Spanx, right? That are bold and powerful and make you feel bold and powerful, right? And now she's got a foundation where she's, you know, helping other entrepreneurs. Uh, she had a, a red pocketbook thing during COVID where you could write in a quick pitch and she would send you a $5,000 check to, to get your business off the ground. So she, for female entrepreneurs. So again, you know, her, her why is empowering women to be their best selves. You know, Elon Musk, right? Crazy, smart, don't know how he does it. Uh, parallel entrepreneur, right? SpaceX, Tesla, the, uh, what? They also uh, Hydro Loop, Hyperloop, right? Solar City, right? He is definitely thinking big, right? He's he's worried about us becoming extinct as human beings because of the way that we've treated our planet and and minerals and, and whatnot. So his goals are to reduce global global warming through sustainable energy production and consumption by reducing the risk of human extinction and establishing a human colony on Mars. Like that's his why. I mean that's crazy, right? But big, right? So he's thinking really big. And and if you look at it, everything that he's doing, sustainable energy, right? Reducing our energy burden through electronic vehicles right, or going to space, you know, just, just crazy big stuff. That's his why. So the question is, what's your why? And there are five whys here intentionally because this is a tool, um, you know, the first why is usually pretty superficial. So you kind of have to go dig deeper than you. You have to ask yourself, you know, what is my why? Okay, say so your why is helping entrepreneurs, right? Then why is that your why, right? And you have to go five levels into that. So, you know, my why is, is serving other entrepreneurs, right? And I'm doing it to make other people's lives easier than the life that I've lived, especially as an early stage entrepreneur. But the truth is I'm mostly passionate about women, right? So female entrepreneurs. Right? And I'm mostly passionate about helping more female entrepreneurs decide to actually go seek funding, right? Because so few women get funded. In fact, it's atrocious. We actually lost ground in 2020. Less female founders got funded in 2020 than did in the last three years combined, right? So, so we're losing ground. Sorry, my, my coworker is a little upset here. It's okay, baby. Sorry, Mocha's barking. So what's your why? And why is that your why? And this is a time to take some notes. So I'm gonna be quiet for a sec. I lost my picture. I lost my picture. I don't know how. Come I did something. Very quick on it. You still got it, you must do something. Something went weird. What? Something went weird. Post attendee, official online pick. Is that? Go back over here. 
Let me put it from here. No. All right, so you should all be writing, taking notes. What's your why? And why is that your why? All right, my next question for you is think big. What would you do if you did not think you would fail? Like if failure couldn't ever happen, you knew you were going to have tremendous success. How big is that vision? What do you want to change? Most of the entrepreneurs I meet with on a daily basis, especially in Savannah, unfortunately, are thinking way too small. Um, and when you think small, it's harder to get a team to join you. It's harder to get investors to join you. It's harder to get a first customer to use an ugly product um, because they haven't bought into the big vision, right? Or there is no big vision to buy into, right? And so thinking big is, is really critical to building a strong team, to, to finding an investor or finding investors that wanna support your vision and wanna support you moving forward. Um, I mean, with way too many people that, that don't think big. So how can you think big? How can you scale your vision? How can you serve more people? All right, my next question is, how do you start with the end in mind? Um, so what does success look like? Right? Is it an exit? Is it that you run this business till you can't do it anymore and you hand it over to your grandkids? Um, what what is what does this look like? Um, uh, do you sell it? You know, um, so what is what does success look like? Um, when I first launched Startup Chicks, one of my one of my mentors said my vision was too too small because my my vision when I launched Startup Chips was to get 10 to 20 women together once a month in Atlanta and just get them to move forward, right? Eventually we had uh, 10 chapters of Startup Tricks all over the country and grew 10,000 members that were participating in events all over the globe through our online channels. Um, and, and that all happened because that specific mentor of mine, jean viev Boss, founder of Pink Magazine, said, Jen, you're thinking too small. Jen, what's your end game? Uh, and I didn't have an end game. So um, having an end game is really important. One of the, I have a current idea that I'm working on on the side and it's a billion dollar business. That's my goal. That's the end. The end is it's a billion dollar business, that it's a unicorn and it gets acquired. And every employee, every single person, on the team is a millionaire when we sell that business. That's the end for that business, that this new idea I'm doing on the side. So what, it, what does the end look like? What, where do you hope to be in five to 10 years with this business and what does success look like? 
And by the way, if you have teams, you need to go back and have these conversations with your team because it can be challenging if you don't all have the same end in mind. My next question to you is what do you personally love to do? And this is important because you need to figure out what your role needs to be and what you need to find other people to do. Um, my very first startup, I'm chief technology officer and I'm coding and I'm doing all this other stuff, but I also ended up somehow doing customer support. So here I am answering hundreds of emails a day while trying to lead a tech team. That was not on my list of personally love to do things, right? <laughs> uh, and I was miserable. So until I figured out that like, that's not what, that's something that I should be outsourcing. That is not in my zone of genius. And that is not something that I love to do um, and got it off my plate. I was pretty miserable. And I thought I didn't like startups. It wasn't that I didn't like startups, it's that I didn't like doing emails and um, for customer support. Now, I actually have enjoyed doing some emails for customer support because it lets you know what the customer is experiencing and what the problems are. And I got to the point where I actually made every single software developer on the team do customer support at least two days a month, just so they knew uh, what problems they were causing by having bad tech. But the, the real question there is like, what do you love to do? And how do you get into your zone of genius most of the time? It's not that you're gonna always love what everything that you do, right? But how do you get into your zone of genius most of your day? And so figuring out what your zone of genius is very important to figuring out how you want to set up your company structure. Who do you wish to serve? I've come to believe that who you wish to serve is sometimes more important than your why. Um, lately, it's certainly more important than what? Like all of you gave me great ideas today, but understanding who you wish to serve is the most important component. And some of you have multiple customer sets. So getting really deep into who you wish to serve is important because these folks are going to be your customers, your allies, your friends, you know, for five to 10 years. And so if you end up not liking them, not liking that type of person or the, the person that you're serving, it's going to be a painful five to 10 years. So you better make sure that, that, you know, your audience becomes your tribe, like your people that you wish to serve, that you are helping them solve a problem or grow in a meaningful way and that you get joy from helping them grow or solving their problem. So who is that? And how can you get really specific on that? And we're gonna spend four weeks talking about it, but you know, get into demographics and psychographs at, psychographics and what they do for fun. And you know, we're gonna get into customer personas and so we're gonna go really deep on this, but right now, as, as we come into next week, I need you to be thinking about who, who you wish to serve, right? With Startup Chicks, I started out too broad. Startup Chicks started out serving everybody. I, my, my motto is if you want to call yourself a chick, then you're probably a chick, right? Uh, Cause not everybody wants to call themselves a chick, especially in this day and age, but, um, what ended up happening then is it's too broad. And, um, you know, what I really wanted was to help women raise money, capital, you know, fundraise, find the women that were growing businesses that were big enough to, to warrant angel or venture capital and teach women how to do that. Um, and so I had to, at first, we had all the wrong people in Startup Chicks. And over the years, we kind of had to hone our message to get back to Okay, what, we're, what our sweet spot is, what we do best is teach people how to raise money. So who, and get as specific as you can.
just trying to make sure you don't have any questions. Okay, so next, who is your KISS? I like to call it KISS, your killer support system. So eventually you're hopefully gonna grow a business and have a team, but, and some of you already have teams, which is awesome, but it takes more than a t just your team to support you. Um, it takes your spouse. Like, so if your spouse is not into you or your significant other is not into you growing this business and supporting uh, this initiative, you're gonna have a hard time. Your kids, you know, uh, this is something that's going to take away time from them to at least to start. So that might be hard. And if they don't understand why you're doing this, um, you know, this is going to be challenging. Your friends, your fam your extended family, how do you get them on board to be supportive of, of you in this, in this endeavor? And then how, how do you, I hope that this group becomes part of your killer support system from a entrepreneurship can be lonely. And so you wanna be around people that are going through similar things. And so hopefully we can form a nice tight group of folks that can help each other through uh, the challenges as you're growing in your business. And so who is your killer support system? Kiss. And I'm very blessed to have Miriam, Kate, and Tyler on my killer support system. What values do you want your business to espouse? Um, Kate and I have actually been going through a book called Traction uh, last fall and probably need to get back to it one of these days, but uh, really working on our, our vision and our, our values for the Creative Coast. Um, and one of our values, strangely enough, is fun, right? We want to have fun. If we're not having fun, why are we doing this, right? And so, yeah, we're ser serving entrepreneurs and we're helping our creative community and we want to have an impact, but we also want to have fun. And so what are the values that you want to espouse in your business um, and there's tons of different exercises that you can do to figure this out uh, as an individual, what, what values kind of are, are your strengths, um, and then as a business as well. Um, but what, what's important to you and what's important to you to carry on into your business is really from a value perspective. which leads into corporate culture. So values hopefully align with your corporate culture, right? And corporate cultures are tough because if you're not intentional about it, it does get created for you, right? By the time you've had have six employees on board, you have a culture, whether you like it or not. So if you're not intentional with the corporate, corporate culture, then, um, then it, then it just happens, right? And your corporate culture can get destroyed by one bad seed in the beginning, right? So one bad apple um, can, can hurt your corporate culture. So how open is your corporate culture? You know, is it hierarchical? Is it everyone's equal? Is it an open door policy? You know, is it laid back and relaxed? Um, you know, do you have a lot of fun brainstorming sessions or is it more hierarchy, right? And so thinking these things through up front and knowing that is, is important. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanna do and, and tried to do in my last company and will do in my next company, and it's a little different with the Creative Coast because Creative Coast is a nonprofit, but I want every employee to feel like an owner, right? I mentioned that earlier when my next company hits a billion dollars and it gets acquired, every single person's going to be a millionaire that works for that company. It's a, everyone has to be an owner. And I like that idea because, and that's part of my corporate culture and the company that I'm going to create in the future is everyone needs to feel like an owner because I want everyone to bring their ideas to the table and everyone to contribute at that owner level and feel like that matters. Um, like they have that level of impact 
in, in the business and that level to influence change and make this in decision making process. Um, and so that's one of the corporate culture items that I think about, um, even with a nonprofit, um, you know, how, how do I make people feel like they, they own it? Uh, they own the projects that they're working on. Um, cause I want, I want to create an owner culture where everyone feels like they're an owner and that they're, that we want to hear their ideas. My last organization that I ran ATDC, um, I, I was uh, the general manager of this group and I took it from a, uh, almost failing to being very successful, but my, my personality kind of took over the organization and, and that was somewhat intentional to save a failing organization, but um, eventually got to the point where that was jeopardizing the, the, whether or not the, the corporation would be innovative in the future. And so literally my number two person and I would disagree publicly at team meetings. It was planned ahead, but <laughs> we would publicly disagree and argue in front of the team so that everyone knew that they didn't, they didn't have to be a yes ma'am to, to Jen, that they could actually disagree and, and have an argument with me over our ideas and that that would be okay. We literally planned that. So, um, and that was part, that was because we literally did that because we did not want the corporate culture to be like, well, Jen said it has to be this way, so it has to be this way. So um, you have to be really intentional about how you set your corporate culture. All right, let's get real about money. Um, how much do you wanna make? Right, how much do you wanna make personally and how much do you want the company to make or be worth, right? I told you already, my next company is gonna be a billion dollar valuation. Now, that probably realistically means about $300 million a year revenue run rate to be a billion dollars, right? Because for the types of businesses, online businesses that I start typically have a one to three times multiple when you sell it. So we're talking about a $300, 000, $300 million a year run rate business to be a billion dollar company, right? And then you have to think about how much you wanna make and how do you want your team to be paid, right? I want my team to be paid really well. Like if you're on my team and you're part owner, right? You should feel pretty good about what you're making, right? And so thinking about that upfront as you're thinking about your vision for the company, right? I don't never wanna lose an employee because somebody's gonna pay them better than I am. Right, I wanna, you know, I am in Savannah, Georgia to raise the average county wage by bringing in high wage jobs, tech jobs to Savannah, Georgia, right? So I better pay decent salaries. I better not come in and pay under, under the rate, right? So uh, Kate and I've had a number of discussions of I could, we could probably get free interns for course credits. And I'm like, no, we're gonna pay interns $15 an hour, right? Um, and that may soon be minimum wage, but you know, we're going to pay. So get real about the money. Really think about what you need personally, what you hope to make, right? What, how you want to pay people. How much money does the, mon the, was the company make every year, right? And then what is that, what is that dream valuation slash exit look like, right? If that's your plan. Or maybe it's just you want to make you know, $150,000 a year for the next 10 years and you're, you're done, you're good, you sell the business for whatever. One of the things about these things is it's all very personal. Everyone's view of success is different. So I want you to get real about what, what it is, what money is for you, what's important for you from a money perspective. All right, that was the last slide actually, huh? Awesome, yes. The homework is to craft your vision. And I'm gonna see, there's, here it is. Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold. This is one of my favorites. And it's at cameronherald.com and the first chapter is free. And it's really all you need to follow his method for crafting a vision. Most of the book is examples, but the first chapter will walk you through this type of process. And so you can do a download and create your vision. Um, there are really cool examples out there. In fact, on his website, I think one of the, one of the examples is actually a local company, a local HQ company, fulfillment.com. 
actually uses vivid vision. Um, Savannah Bananas uses vivid vision. Um, so I think it's a really good tool to really kind of craft your vision such that you know where you're headed. It becomes something that you can share with potential team members, with potential advisors. Say, hey, this is where I'm going. Can you help me get there, right? I, I, again, start with the why, really like it as well. And then if you're really wondered, like want to drill into some of your strengths to figure out your strengths, so that you can focus on, like a lot of people say you should work, like, try and build your skills so that you're, uh, build, build your weak skills, try and improve on your weak skills. I don't believe that. Hire somebody to do the weak skills and focus on your strengths and go all in on your strengths. So figure out what your strengths, you can do something like um, Strength Finder. Actually, um, Tina probably has a lot of ideas on some other things that you could do. Um, to really dig into your strengths and your core values. Tina, you wanna join in? If you're still with us? Yes, I'm, I'm still here. Um, there's a work values inventory that I believe might be free, let me. You wanna put it in the chat maybe and I can share it with everybody? Or you can send it to us later too. You can send it to Kate later and we can get it out, um, but. Kate's put the traction book in the um, chat box, uh, Vivid Vision. Um, but we'll, we'll include this in a mail with the slides. Let me look up the life values inventory. Um, so there, there's, a ton, there's a ton of books and a ton of tools that you can use. I really like the Vivid Vision from a company perspective. Um, starting with the why and strength funders are a little bit more personal, but I think it helps to look at personal and then move towards that. I also really do like this traction book and the um, model that they use, the entrepreneur's opera operating system, um, to think about what five-year goals are, three-year goals, and one-year goal, things like that. And thank you. Tina just put lifevaluesinventory.org in the, in the chat. Um, so that is the homework. Um, next week, so next week we start customer discovery. And you do, if you wish to continue with us, you do have to go and sign up uh, for the program. It is $100 for the program. We are a nonprofit entity and we um, pay, we need, we need money to do the programs and it's going to take a lot of mine, uh, my time and Kate's time and our mentors time in order to actually run this and make it meaningful. It's going to be every Wednesday through April 28th. Every Wednesday is going to be two to three hours of class and coaching. The coaching, I will say, um, the way we run it, the way we run it on the, um, during the normal classes is we start with a share. So after the first class, after next class, well, we'll probably start with a share next class for anybody that does the vivid vision and wants to talk about that experience, we'll share that. Then we'll do the class. So we'll start with a share. So the first half of the class will be actually every, it's a reverse classroom experience where each of the students will talk about their experience with the homework. And then the next class will be taught to preface you for the homework for the following week. Okay, so it's kind of a reverse classroom experience where we are discussing your business, your customers, and your, the homework that you've done to date every single week, first and foremost, because I think you get more from that than you do from the lesson. I can always send you a video of a class and you can watch it afterwards. I'd rather hear how the homework went for you and how the customer interviews went for you or how designing your one page executive summary went for you than, than to have you um, sit and listen to us talk the whole time. So it is a, the first hour to two hours might be sharing depending on how many people are in the class. And then the last hour is the, the class to give you the next homework. We will have at least one optional coaching session per month over the next three months, the first Monday of the month at 4.30 and we may add more. Um, so that we call a lean startup circle with ATDC and, and Rad, the other teacher and I 
talked uh, just last week and discussed the idea of inviting this class in particular to join that group and have these conversations. And possibly if we felt like we needed it, we might even add a, uh, every other week it, it'll be optional. It will be people that want to talk through the process that they're going through or the challenges that they're having and, and get more coaching. Um, and then there will be about 10 hours of homework every week. Um, so it is a big time commitment. Um, but the reality is if you can't find 15 hours a week to work on your business, you're not going to be able to move forward and be successful in your business. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the share so we can see each other's faces. Jen, is this a good time to ask question? Yes, so I was just switching to, to, to get out of there so we could see each other's faces and I could answer any questions that y'all might have. Very good. Uh, so my question is that uh, this morning I had a call with uh, uh, ATDC and uh, I was talking to them and uh, you know while I was doing some search I was I ended up finding you guys and I immediately registered and it ended up uh, the session to be today. Awesome. But my question is that uh, uh, I'm talking with them for last two weeks and uh, it seems that they are going to accept our company. So if I am going to join uh, their session as well, which is going to begin, I believe, very soon, uh, do you think that it is making sense for me to join both? So ATDC has three different levels, three different programs. They have ATDC Educate, ATDC Accelerate, and ATDC Signature. Right. Are you joining Accelerate or Educate? Actually, we were talking about accelerator, uh, but uh, this is for the first time that they are accepting the companies outside of Georgia. And uh, currently I'm uh, you know, in Texas. So they were kind of entertaining this idea and now they want to accept uh, uh, outside companies as well. So uh, we are in a preliminary conversation with them, but it seems that uh, they are going to allow us to at least join some of their session. And uh, while their you know, discussion is still going on how to accept outside companies, uh, we may be able to kind of join their cohort as well. Yeah, that's a challenge for them because they're entirely state funded, yeah. right? So to exactly. put state money towards a non-state entity is, is politically challenging for them. So, uh, it's interesting. Um, do you know who you're talking, like who would be your coach? So every Accelerate company has a catalyst or coach assigned to them. Do you know who that is? Yeah, uh, well, I spoke to Bill. Uh, I don't remember his last name right now, Robert. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Bill teaches the customer discovery class. Exactly, yeah, he's, that's it. And yeah. he's awesome. Yeah. Um, for what you're doing, I'd want Monique. Yeah, so I, today I spoke to someone else, uh, you know, a lady who really is leading FinTech and uh, they are introducing me to I a few more her. people. She's new. Yeah, she's new, I don't know her. Yeah. I was gonna say Monique Mills is like their chief marketing officer person. So as far as marketing, she like, she'd be awesome for you. Um, I don't know the FinTech person, they're new. Um, it is a great program and anybody that can get into Accelerate or Signature should. Yeah. Um, uh, Oxus, I believe, is a signature company, Miram's company. Um, it's because it's hard. It's, it's really hard. Like, so yeah. I would meet with a thousand entrepreneurs or companies. Well, probably, yeah. Realistically, we would look at a thousand companies a year in the state of Georgia and about 200 would be in Accelerate but probably only 40 new ones out of the year right and 40 in Signature which is the top tier series A stage companies right. and so I mean it's really it's really uh, it's going to be tough yeah no, and it's it's an awesome program. I mean, I recommend it highly. I, I ran it for seven years. All the programs that they teach today, for the most part, I created. This yeah. curriculum is their curriculum, which I wrote for them 10 years ago. And then we're packaging it as a boot camp. They don't run it as a boot camp. We're the only people that run it as a boot camp. Um, they may in the future, I don't know. They, right. But so, so 
I don't know realistically that you have the bandwidth to do both. Yeah. Um, yeah it is going to be... join our program for now. And if you get into Accelerate, you yeah. know, drop yeah. out. Okay. Um, right. And if you don't get into Accelerate, at least you've got a path forward. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Makes sense. So another question uh, I have, Jen, uh, quickly, uh, is that, uh, you know, just like any other accelerator, they do also kind of help, uh, you know, creating a partnership or uh, they do have uh, some companies, you know, uh, who really support the startup. Do you have any such uh, kind of uh, companies, uh, you know, aligned uh, with uh, your program that we can work with? So I mentioned earlier when I went over the calendar, so we will bring in lawyers. Mm -hmm. So uh, both uh, corporate formation as well as IP lawyers, and we will bring in accounting firms. Um, the very end of it, um, April 28th will be, uh, I can't remember whether it's April, April 28th is a practice pitch, but my goal is to actually bring investors to a pitch day at some point at the very end. So to actually bring both uh, local and, and Atlanta friends and New York friends that are investors to a pitch day at the very end for people that want to pitch to investors. Okay. Um, so there will be partners. Um, you know, a number of the people that come in and coach are, are have their own consulting practices, you know, from a PR or marketing or whatnot. So, so you will be meeting various service providers throughout the process. Um, and so, yeah. So any, any kind of uh, major corporate, uh, you know, partners uh, who will be joining where we can have a pilot opportunity? No. Uh, that is, that is, no? So this is the idea accelerator. So most of you, like you're, you're further, you're building a product. The, the folks, what we're going through right now is we're, we don't have a corporate engagement program right now. Um, we will likely have a corporate engagement program in Savannah in the not too distant future. Um, probably not a fit for you because it's logistics focused. I see. So we have um, plug and play ventures who we're working with out of, out of uh, Silicon Valley, who's launching a program here in Savannah focused on first mile logistics. So um, it's very specific and targeted towards that. Um, but ATDC has a great corporate connect program, um, you know, based on actually plug and play ventures. That's, we stole yeah. plug and play ventures uh, cook, uh, methods and called it corporate connect at ATDC. So, um, but we're not, we don't have a lot of, um, well, I guess, you know, we have a lot of small businesses that we could connect it to in town. We have a partnership with the chamber and the Savannah Downtown Business Association and and buy local. So we could make some local connections for you through the program as part of your customer discovery. Yeah, that will be great. Yeah, that will be helpful. But we're, but we're not, you know, Savannah doesn't have large corporations in the retail space. Good. The decision makers aren't here for Good. retailers. Yeah. And one more question that uh, in this program, uh, will we be able to kind of identify any mentor for us that uh, uh, we will have a weekly class, but uh, is it going to be something, you know, that we have an opportunity to connect with uh, somebody that you have paired us with any mentor that we can kind of uh, ask any question or uh, will that be within uh, this group? I want to do that through Slack. So we're going to, all the mentors and myself will be on Slack with you guys on a private Slack channel. So anytime you have a question, you can post it in the Slack channel. Sure. And I will hope steer it to the right mentor based on the mentor skill set. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank awesome. you, Jen. Any other questions? I got it. All right. Well, if you don't have any other questions, that's it for tonight. Um, Sign up. If you have questions that you don't want to uh, ask publicly and you want to reach out, um, email me, jen at thecreativecoast.org, and we can try and have a quick conversation between now and next week so that we can make sure it's a good fit for you. Um, you know, we, we want to 
hopefully build a strong group of people that want to go through this whole process together. I should say that different types of businesses are hard. Um, sometimes some people will get further ahead for a period of time and other people will get further behind. And it's, it's somewhat challenging that way, especially um, some of the B2B companies have a harder time getting that first set of interviews because it's not like you can just reach out to anybody and have an interview when you need to reach a very specific targeted you know, type of business. Um, so we'll do our best to keep everyone moving and set some goals and milestones. And really, you know, our goal is to help move you forward, to help you validate that this is a business worth pursuing, to do a deep dive and identify like a really good customer, to, first customer, especially early adopter, first customer to go after such that you can get to product and revenue as quickly as possible. And then hold you accountable, right? So be your partner and say, hey, you know, you, you slacked off this week. Get with it, right? Um, to make sure that you're keeping the move, keep keeping the momentum going.